You would you like to transform a carport into a greenhouse that you can grow things in? That's what we're doing this week. Stay tuned. Maybe you've seen carports before. This is actually a double model, two car wide. You can get them single. They're just smaller. The pieces of steel are smaller, but it's the same idea. And you can usually get them pretty cheap in the spring. People don't want to store them. So it's a great chance to be able to buy the equivalent of supplies for a greenhouse for a lot cheaper than a greenhouse. And you can actually combine them. You could put two long or three long and get a greenhouse out of it. So that's what we're doing. And I want to show you the steps to make it go from a carport to a greenhouse. The first thing we had to do is actually straighten it out. These things were not straight. And this old carport had once been a carport when we had a shelter and the top was on it but we didn't anchor it properly and we ended up finding it in the pines and it was all bent so it was pretty well considered scrap but I took a half a day and I unbent all the pipes there's still a couple of kinks left but otherwise it's pretty good it's certainly usable and it's pretty tough steel first we just straighten it out that was the first step then the second we installed the bottom pieces of wood we overdid it you don't need such a thick piece but we had this two by eight i think it is and we just put it on now how we put it on we actually drilled through the wood and drilled through this pipe and put a long bolt these were i don't know five inch bolts and that's how we held. So the piece of wood is really on there and it helps straighten it. This happened to be a 16 foot pieces. So that first one is a full piece and then we just put in a joint. So that makes the whole thing nice and straight at the bottom because that's what's actually holding the start of what it becomes a greenhouse is these rails. And these will have a wiggle wire put in here and I'll show you how when we get there. This is actually installing the rail that will hold the wiggle wire. doing a little update because we've been moving fast on this and so it's gotten to this point we did roll in our because it's a greenhouse gonna be next spring but right now this year uh, for the winter we're gonna put our chickens in here so we put in a couple of bales of hay which will be used for bedding and we happen a good score on uh, cubes or IBC totes we got six of them so we're gonna put them in here they're gonna have water and that will be a big battery to hold some of the extra heat in here overnight we also put in all of our scrap drops of apple that's gonna be in here for the winter so the chickens will have lots to feast on we still have a reservoir we'll fill that all the big containers with water will be a big battery of temperature so a few of the key things involved in this, Mathieu is just uh, taping the joints because this is a carport, it's not a greenhouse. And so they're not as concerned when they make it, they wanna make it shippable. There's the worst piece, that one was bent the most. Uh, but these are built so that they could be disassembled in pieces and shipped. That's why it's a carport so that you could buy it at the the reno centers and so on it's not a greenhouse greenhouses usually comes in two pieces often with the joint at the peak and all this would be one piece so it's usable it's pretty this is a really good one because it's double that's probably three inches there and it's ovalized this is a company that actually builds greenhouses and they got into building carports uh, so the structure is there the bones are good now we'll see about getting it now one of the key things is this this is really really important if you put up something like a greenhouse or a shelter and you don't anchor it properly 
I mean, we put the anchors that came with it, which are made to basically drive into your driveway. So it's like big earth augers or big screws, you put them in, and that was supposed to hold it. Well, in our sandy soil here, those didn't hold. And can you imagine you get a big wind? And then what's happening is this thing covered becomes a giant sail. And that was not good because once the wind caught underneath, it starts to vibrate it and then it's starting to push up the earth anchors and everything goes and what a mess. So now what we did before doing this step, we actually put in, it's called a dead man. So we put in a cedar post in underground here, about a four foot length of cedar post. And then we tied these ropes around the cedar post and then tied it onto, onto the bottom of the greenhouse frame. So that's gonna be our anchors now. We have four of them, one on each corner. They're really, they're in there. And what we'll do is we'll actually use these totes. So that one, it's almost that we'll have to pull the, the greenhouse a little closer and we'll actually attach it in through these, this tote. So that will be another anchor. It's not gonna fly away. We're also going to close in the ends, but that's another day. Today it's just to get the, let's just get the plastic up so that it will be weather tight. And then we can work from, even on a rainy day, we can work to do the end pieces. So taping's on, the rails are on, the support wood is on. Once the taping's done, we're actually able to put the plastic on. Exciting! Hey, the chickens are not waiting very long. They're already moving in. They say, this will be nice. We'll like being in here. These are rebel chickens who don't want to stay where they should stay. Eli's just going to install that same rail that holds the, that will hold the plastic. So he has to install along the outside edge of the greenhouse so this will hold the plastic on the ends oh there goes the bit rail going in Now that we've got the plastic taped onto the straps, we're gonna pull the whole thing over the structure. At least try. plastic over. Now you can only do this when it's not windy. We'll start to attach. The other end is just about flush and we'll keep the extra on this end here. Maybe eventually do a little lean-to greenhouse on this side. But right now we'll attach the wiggle wire on the back side. <laughs>
Here's what's involved in putting this wiggle wire in, and it's an amazing invention when you think of it. How it can tighten plastic and hold it onto the edge of something. You want to get your plastic fairly taut to start. Put in one, one part of your wiggle wire, like that. And then you just push on it and it'll kind of snug the, the plastic as you go. And you can kind of tell by the sound of the plastic when it's tight, because it kind of sounds a bit like a drum. Doom, doom, doom. For something that I've done for the first time, it's pretty, pretty simple. It's pretty simple. This works really well. There. Bo is on a on a hay break, lying down in the shade because it's too hot already in the greenhouse. Snow With snow behind her. This stage is done. Very nice. We will still have use these cedar posts. We want to have a. This will be lean to, and it will lean down. So that still has to be done, but that's very good for today. This is not ideal to not have it closed in so that the wind can't catch it, but hopefully we won't get too a big windstorm. Uh, and this side, much, 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 much nicer. It's already, you can feel the warmth in there. Greenhouse is just, it's so pleasant. It's so pleasant. So the same thing here. This too will be a lean-to, like that, with those posts. Fantastic progress. Really nice. I did say, ideally you do it so you won't get a wind. Well, we didn't have a wind storm, but just some wind. And it's already torn the plastic in two places. This is not ideal. Hey, that's what happens when you take on a job that takes more than a day. And the other end is open and it just happened that face is north, so that's where we'll put an opaque plastic. And the wind is coming from there, so it comes right into the greenhouse. That part is nice, but this that will be the lean-to, thankfully we have quite a bit of extra. But we'll patch those few holes and put it on and it'll be done. So if you take on a job like this, try to have everything ready. I should have had these logs peeled and ready. Uh, should have had them in the ground before we even put up the plastic. All that should have been done. So think through your operation so that all the plastic could be put on and tight, not flapping. Now to get the logs ready for the lean-to, we just had to, we peeled off some of the bark whatever's going to be closest to the plastic. And the last thing was to make it really smooth. So I've been using the grinder. That grinder wheel has done. I'll finish this last log and it's done. So it's really just grinding them off so that when you run your hand over it, everything feels really nice and smooth. You have to think in terms of plastic. If there was a plastic sheet at rubbing at all so that it wouldn't it wouldn't wear down the plastic. Logs will be just about ready. We'll be ready. And next thing will be to put them up on the ends. So we got it done. We got the north end finished, the lean two posts and the dark plastic because it doesn't have to be clear. There's no light comes through. We got the their shelter in here. And we put the front or the sunny side lean twos on. And actually we got it done just before the snow, big deadline. Chickens are quite happy in here now. And they will be moving material around. We give them, we have two bales of hay in here. And that will be the bedding for the winter. So we keep a fork in here and we'll just keep putting hay down and they move the hay, which is nice because then any, any droppings that they make will end up getting covered by the hay as they kick it around. Only difference is they will have a lot less greenery for the winter, but that's to be expected. 
very comfortable. It's actually quite nice in here. Just move the feeders up so that the chickens would clean up what they drop. But this is the winter quarters and next spring, uh, actually as the chickens start to move out and once the snow melts off, this will all become growing space. And it's quite a, quite a roomy greenhouse. I can see tomatoes and cucumbers here in abundance. Certainly cucumbers after chickens, boy, they will grow like crazy, benefiting from this extra nutrients. Sometimes you just have to get it done, even though it's on a deadline. Take your carport and think of it as not just a carport. Get some if you can and consider putting them into a greenhouse. And you will get a greenhouse. May not be perfect, but you know what? It's the best one we've ever had as a greenhouse space. Intrigued? Check out the virtual tour of the permaculture orchard. Have trees already? Pruningcourse.com Subscribe, please. Check out some of the other videos or playlists. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something from it.